a blast furnace on the site of ThyssenKrupp steel in Duisburg. Around 10,000 tons of hot metal are extracted from iron ore every day in this furnace. Four furnaces are in operation around the clock. When it is tapped, the hot metal has a temperature of 1,500 degrees. An employee takes a sample. Iron has a crystalline structure. Under an electron microscope, we can see the points of the tiny crystals, the so-called dendrites, on the surface. When iron solidifies, the atoms, shown here as spheres, arrange themselves into crystals referred to as grains. The crystals contain fine channels, known as dislocation lines. Although the grains can get stuck, they generally stay mobile. The metal is formable. Iron virtually never occurs in its pure elementary form. After the melting process, the lattice of iron atoms is interspersed with carbon atoms. In this state, it's called pig iron. The high carbon content of 3 to 5 percent makes the solidifying metal brittle. In this atomic structure, it cannot be processed further. To make pig iron into formable steel, the carbon first has to be removed in the melt shop. The melting vessel, the converter, is filled with scrap. The iron in the scrap is a valuable raw material. Recycling provides economic benefits, but here the scrap's main purpose is to provide controlled cooling during the combustion of the carbon. The molten pig iron is now poured onto the scrap and it is blown with oxygen. The carbon reacts with the oxygen and is thus removed. It burns almost completely. A tiny amount of 0.03% remains. Adding alloying elements like manganese or titanium influences the structure of the atomic lattice and gives it stability. The pig iron is turned into steel. The Dillinger Hüttenwerke steel mill in the Saarland area produces high-grade heavy plate. A pendulum breaks up specimens of steel. Finished steel cannot simply be broken by hand, sometimes 30 times the force is needed. The material now has a consistency that is strong, yet ductile. It is formable. In the Dillingen laboratories, engineers scrutinize the ratio of formability to strength, the key values of all steel products. To produce such steels, constant checks are essential from the very start of the production process. In the continuous caster, the molten steel flows first from the ladle into the tundish. From there it flows into two water-cooled moulds in the ground. While it slowly solidifies, it is held in shape by rolls. 30 meters further down, two strands of solid steel emerge with a temperature of around 800 degrees Celsius. The strands are cut into 50-ton slabs and taken to a storage area where they first cool down.
for further processing, the slabs have to be cut again and then reheated to over 1,200 degrees in pusher-type furnaces. The red-hot blocks of steel can now be rolled. The slab passes several times through the rolling mill, which exerts a pressure of 10,000 tons on the hot steel. With each pass, the slab becomes up to 60 millimeters thinner. At such high temperatures, the steel reacts with the air and oxidizes. The slab is repeatedly cleaned with high-pressure water to prevent the fine layer of scale from being rolled into the material. During the entire production process, the slabs are electronically tested for flatness, cleanness and exact thickness. Using specific processes, the slabs are cooled, reheated and repeatedly rolled. This allows control of whether the steel is to be soft and readily formable, or particularly hard and stable. The exact process used in Dillingham cannot be filmed, as in this process lies the secret of every steel producer. Heavy plate is required in all applications in which structures are subjected to extreme conditions and have to withstand enormous weights. By contrast, finer parts and complex structures are made from a thin sheet. Particularly in automotive construction, the development of new high-strength and readily formable steels has given sheets a huge technical boost. The German steel industry has profited from these developments. Germany steel companies hold leading positions in the global markets, and this is also the result of close cooperation between the steel producers and their customers, the steel users. Automotive and mechanical engineering are sectors which are dependent on high-performance materials. More than 2,000 steel grades, which are being constantly improved in quality, also strengthened the innovative capacities of these sectors in Germany. Added to this are close links with universities, institutes and companies. When it comes to innovation, production and sustainability, the German steel industry holds leading positions. Europe's largest steel site. Here in Duisburg, ThyssenKrupp Steel produces 15 million metric tons of crude steel per year. Unlike in Dillingen, this advanced casting rolling line combines and optimizes several production steps. The molten steel also solidifies into two strands after casting, and these strands are also cut into slabs, although at five centimeters they are considerably thinner. A special feature of the line, the heat of the freshly cast slabs is used. They are not cooled off in a storage area, and don't have to undergo energy-intensive reheating before rolling. Continuous furnaces keep them at a constant temperature of 1,150 degrees and feed them alternately to a directly connected rolling mill. The steel passes through these normally separate steps in one continuous process. As a result, the strip can be rolled considerably thinner and produced without quality fluctuations the line guarantees consistently high quality and high productivity. After rolling, the strip is cooled at an exactly defined rate in this special unit. This allows the hardness and formability of the steel to be controlled. The steel strip, which is still hot, is wound into coils weighing up to 30 metric tons. Due to the heat, they are covered with a black layer of scale. Part of the steel is delivered in this condition, but most of it undergoes further processing steps. Steel specimens are baked into bake light in a small furnace. That makes them easier to handle for the employees of ThyssenKrupp's metallography department in Duisburg. Here, the steel is subjected to exacting quality controls at each stage. A robot grinds and polishes the surfaces of the specimens for subsequent examination. Nowadays, steel is mainly created on computers. 
The time it takes for developers to get to see specimens of their new steels is getting ever shorter. The development process of steel today is very complex. At an early stage of development, materials engineers, surface engineers, applications engineers, and even sales staff sit down together to ensure that a future product will meet market requirements and prove successful. The importance of virtual development is increasing all the time. Today, for example, we can apply the properties of a new steel virtually to our customer's product without ever actually having had our hands on the steel itself which naturally speeds up development times dramatically. The specimens are examined by a variety of methods. Under the microscope, it is possible to identify and analyze the crystal structure of the steel, its microstructure. Changes to this microstructure, some of them today in the nano range, allow the properties of the steel to be optimized. Here, the individual grains of the hot strip are still relatively large. The rolling process stretches them, and subsequent heating causes the creation of new crystals. In this way, the density, size and distribution of the grains can be specifically influenced. Depending on how the steel is cooled, grains are formed with different properties. For example, when steel needs to be hard, but at the same time readily formable. Here we can see the distribution of light soft areas and the dark hard areas, which impart strength. There are even intelligent steels whose properties don't change until they are processed. The soft white areas become brown or hard after finishing. Hot strip, such as that from the casting rolling line, can be processed further in cold condition. To remove the scale, the strip is fed through a 125 meter long pickling line. Taco is the name of this facility, in which the strip is first pickled and then cold rolled in one process. Originally, these production steps were separate. In cold rolling stands, with six rolls each, the cleaned strip is reduced to as little as a fifth of its original thickness. The cold rolling process produces particularly high quality steel. It is thin, yet extremely strong, with accuracies to a thousandth of a millimeter. There are five cold rolling stands in sequence, each rinsed by emulsion. The line is fully automated. The process is monitored by a single technician. The rolled steel is repeatedly inspected and the line changes the fine settings automatically. Neural networks make the system capable of learning. In this way, the TACO line made it possible to improve productivity and quality. Above all, the auto industry requires high-tech steels of ever higher quality. As a result, steel has developed dramatically, particularly in Europe. But the rest of the world has not been idle either. On the technology front, China is catching up. Even though the Chinese automobile industry still falls short of European standards, in terms of steel production and processing, China is on its way to becoming a serious competitor. The demand for steel in countries evolving from emerging nations to industrial economies is immensely high. Steel is booming in China and in other countries too. China now accounts for a third of global crude steel production. We only insist on fair rules in international competition. The rules have to be observed and foreign trade thrives on fair competition. We also address the standards which are applied, for example, to production in China, which still have some catching up to do in terms of the environment, social aspects and even intellectual property. Steel companies in Germany and Europe do a great deal in areas such as climate protection. We are trailblazers in this respect and will maintain and expand our leading position. Cars today need to be light and at the same time deliver a good crash performance. Finding the right balance of strength and weight 
is a task on which the automobile and steel industries work closely together. Using simultaneous engineering techniques, they develop joint materials concepts which are tailored not only to the end product of the car, but also to the production conditions of this sector. Simultaneous engineering means parallel development. This results in very short development periods, which are necessary to meet the demands of the market for ever shorter cycle times. We need to be able to make developments quickly. Simultaneous engineering also allows work packages to be shared. For example, vehicle manufacturers and steel producers interact very closely so that the knowledge of the steel producer, for example of materials influencing the processing behavior of new products, can be supplemented ideally ideally by the product knowledge of the customer, such as for a car body. So nowadays steel is more than just a material. Steel producers have evolved into system suppliers. One example of a system product are tailored blanks. Steel sheets of different thickness, grade and finish are welded together into a blank. Previously, individual sheets were supplied, which then also had to be punched, stamped and welded individually. Today, customers can process the delivered tailored blanks directly into finished parts. Here, for example, a door in a reinforcement. That saves time, money and weight while enhancing quality. The use of tailored blanks can be explained by reference to the door and the side member. The door inner is a large formed component. In the past, this part was made from one sheet in one thickness and one strength, although this was not required in all areas of the inner panel. Strength is mainly required at the front in the area of the hinges. Towards the outside, in the area of the door handle recesses, the material could be lighter, thinner and of lower strength. A development based on tailored blanks are tailored tubes, tubes of different material thickness, which are being produced here as prototypes on a tube welding line. Tubes like this allow a completely new approach to body engineering. Developers hope to achieve weight reductions of up to 30%. That moves steel into weight classes, which were previously the reserve of alternative, more expensive materials. The hydroforming process is used to form the tubes into complex shapes. A mold encases the tube. Water is fed in from both ends at high pressure. The pressure expands the material and the water presses the steel from the inside into the mold. Processes like this can save auto manufacturers from having to produce and process several individual parts. But it's not just new materials and processing technologies that have made steel into a high-tech product. Though steel is an extremely hard material, suitable for universal applications, its surface needs to be protected. Surface coatings, sometimes so thin that in cross-section they can only be seen under the scanning electron microscope, make the steel resistant to scratching or prevent corrosion leading to rust. For example, an aluminium coating. A galvanized zinc coating, the most common form of corrosion protection. Cold strip is guided through a bath of molten zinc. As the zinc has to be heated to over 400 degrees for this, the process is referred to as hot dip galvanizing. Here on hot dip coating line 8 in Dortmund, 450,000 metric tons of flat rolled steel are produced each year, mainly for the automotive and household appliance industries. Apart from visual inspections, this line too is fully automated. It is these special coatings, each tailored to the respective end products, that have elevated steel to a multifunctional high-tech material. Depending on the intended use, 
In the household or in industry, corrosion protection is supplemented by other functions such as scratch resistance or wear resistance. For the construction industry, for example, the DOC, Dortmund Surface Engineering Centre, is working on easy to clean surfaces from which water and dirt just roll off. ThyssenKrupp, the Fraunhofer Society and SMS DMAG have joined forces to develop and test new surfaces under ideal conditions, for example in long-term tests. How can newly developed coatings later be applied to coils in the production process even when they are moving at high speeds? The dock has a modular test facility that is the only one of its kind worldwide. Processes such as physical vapour depositioning, PVD for short, in which extremely thin metallic coatings are deposited on a strip under vacuum, can be tested for practical use. Typical mass screening in a laboratory uses only small specimens for coating. We have switched to continuous operations on a coil coating line. Exactly, or let's say almost exactly the same, as you would find in a normal production process. The PVD process can be used even with complex steel parts. In this laboratory of the Fraunhofer Society, which is affiliated with the dock, the process has been expanded to include a plasma beam, which can apply an extremely hard carbon coating. This coating has been named Diamore, as it achieves up to 80% of the hardness of a diamond. Diamore coatings can be used for all surfaces subject to wear loads up to a temperature of approximately 600 degrees centigrade. Examples include use on forming dyes and on metal cutting tools, such as drills. And not only for light alloys and non-ferrous metals, but also for plastic processing tools. In a further variant of the PVD process, semi-molten metal particles are fired against steel surfaces by means of hot plasma and fixed by an integrated laser. The coating is extremely thin and offers high wear protection. At ThyssenKrupp Nieroster in Krefeld, stainless steel is recycled. Ninety years ago, Krupp filed the patent for this steel which does not need any surface coating. Alloying elements such as nickel and chromium transfer their properties such as hardness, toughness and rust resistance to the entire steel product. Stainless steel is melted in electric arc furnaces in which temperature and content can be controlled with very high precision. High voltage generates electric arcs inside the furnace which cause the steel scrap to melt. Krefeld is taking a technological leap forward. There are only two of these strip casting lines in the whole world. The molten steel, which has previously been treated in a special converter, is cast directly between two rolls. Instead of solidifying into thick strands, it emerges from between the two rolls as a thin strip. It took over 140 years for the idea of this process, which was already filed for patent in 1856, to become reality. After casting, the strip passes through a single integrated rolling stand. That saves time and energy. The line for strip casting is considerably smaller than conventional continuous casting lines. Molten steel is converted into high-quality hot strip in just one controlled process.
changing the rolls. Stainless steel is extremely hard. With a combination of 20 rolls and a pressure of 1,200 tons, this line can produce stainless steel cold strip as thin as 0.25 millimeters. The strip passes back and forth several times through the rolling mill. Stainless steel obtains its characteristic shine during cold rolling. To retain this shine, subsequent re-annealing has to be carried out in a hydrogen inert gas atmosphere, otherwise the surface would oxidize and become matte. In this way, the material retains its shine when it is used in building facades. But stainless steel is not just suitable for impressive architectural structures. Its hardness allows it to compensate for high pressure differences, which is particularly important in space flight. It also has hygienic properties, which make it ideal for use in the food and chemical industries. However, stainless steel is also more expensive than conventional steel. In general, even the finest steels end up here. Every year, more than 400 million metric tons of steel are recycled worldwide with no loss of quality. But today, steel faces competition from materials such as aluminium and plastic. Steel stands up very well to the alternative materials. That's because it is very versatile, environmentally compatible, relatively low in cost, and we now have centuries of experience with it. Take a look at today's auto bodies, for example. More than 90% of the parts are currently made of steel, although there are alternatives today. But it would definitely be wrong to rest on our laurels. We must, of course, continue to develop new steels, higher strength steels, readily formable steels, to meet the challenges of the future. Cost advantages are one reason why steel has become an integral part of our lives. But first and foremost, it's the exactly defined combination of strength, formability and surface properties which have made steel the most important and most used high-tech material of our age.